No discussion of photography would be complete without talking about the portrait. It's the revealing of the person inside, the looking at the changes of the environment, of the context, trying to draw the person out and connect. It's how we connect. Lots of times it's through the eyes, the expression, the, the nuance of positioning. There is many, many aspects to the portrait that are important, but probably three of them, four of them, of the biggest ones are timing. In other words, the right timing for the portrait, the context, getting how much of the scene do you leave in, how much do you leave out? When do you get close? When do you back up? The location is extremely important. Does the location uh, speak to who the person is? And most importantly, what's the rapport that the photographer has with the subject? Because that ultimately determines the success of the picture. Now you can get super creative. There's lots of different people doing really amazing things with portraiture. Lots of times you don't have to show the whole person. You can get really tight. The eyes many times is what's going on. A mistake most people make when they're starting out with photography is they don't get close enough. I don't recommend doing this one, but uh, it is kind of an interesting shot, I thought. But they don't get close enough. They, they stand too far back. You have to almost invade the person's space a little bit to get a really good portrait. Now, there are different lenses you can use. The best portrait lens is like a 75 to 135 millimeter, uh, and that really brings the person out. But also, portraits don't necessarily have to be just staged things. They can be, you can get a really good portrait in the midst of an activity or a story like this burn unit, burn victim. There are lots of different ways to do portraiture. They can look in a variety of different ways. They can look, they can look traditional. They can look uh, high fashion. Um, underwater is very popular right now. You see lots of kids' pictures underwater and things. And those to me are a little bit gimmicky, but they still work. But portraiture is how we connect as a culture. So what I want to do right now is I want to spend some time talking about some of the great portraitists. Portraitists hard to say. Um, and probably we might as well start with a master and that was Joseph Karsh. He was a Canadian, uh, passed away in 2002. Karsh uh, photographed many of the icons of the 20th century. Uh, this famous photograph of Winston Churchill is probably in the midst of uh, the uh, just after the war. Uh, shows the grit and determination that sustained a nation. What you can see in a tremendous amount of strength and power in this photograph, cropped very uniquely and differently. But again, where do we go? We go to the eyes. We go to the eyes. Pablo Picasso. Uh, Karsh photographed in his era, in his time, uh, it was a really big deal to be photographed by Karsh. He was sought after for his quality. Use of light, timing, rapport, all those things I talked about. Karsh was a master. Um, Andy Warhol, famous artist and stuff. Uh, Karsh would sit and talk to the individual for a long time before he would ever pick up a camera and make it work. And most successful photographers, uh, especially portraitists, that's exactly what they do. Another famous photographer and portraitist I'd like to talk about is Ernest Haas. Now, Haas is not necessarily known for his portraits, and yet he had uh, many. He was a commercial photographer. He shot on movie sets. Again, he passed away in 1986. Uh, but he would shoot for magazines and, and uh, things like that. And like I say, movies, Albert Einstein's famous photograph of Albert Einstein in his office. Uh, Salvador Dali, every major photographer in the 20th century shot a picture of Dali, I think, and they really worked hard at making a unique photograph out of this extremely colorful individual. Marilyn Monroe in an off-guarded moment. That's what makes this portrait so unique, is the fact that here you have a woman who's at the height of glamour um, and sought after as a sex symbol in her era, and yet there's, a, there's an amazing innocence and just a casualness about this portrait. And it was probably just a grab shot between uh, filming of a movie is probably what it was. But it makes it for an enduring portrait. Um, Eartha Kitt, use of light, tone, texture. And again, Eartha Kitt is an, an entertainer, a dancer. Um, you know, he utilizes the light in a very practical way. It doesn't matter that we can't see her entire body, but we do see there is a sensuality to this photograph. There is a power to it. Um, even that 
blip of light with a smoke up there gives an atmosphere to the photograph. And this is the type of thing that makes really great photographs. One of the most contemporary now, uh, contemporary portraiture portraitist is Annie Leibovitz. And uh, Annie Leibovitz is not a journalist, although a lot of people like to put her in that category. She doesn't describe herself as a journalist. She's a portrait photographer and basically works in fashion. One of her most famous photographs is the very last photograph taken of John Lennon uh, shortly before he was assassinated. But this is probably one of her most famous photographs of Merle Streep. Uh, Leibovitz, again, talks to uh, talks to the subjects for a long period of time to understand what they want to get out of the photograph. Even with like this photograph for the one of the Disney movies where it's a very choreographed type of uh, photograph with lots of assistants and wind machines and reflectors and all kinds of things going on to get this shot that works for the, the image, uh, she maintains a very personable, this is Leibowitz on the left, she maintains a very personal relationship uh, with the subject, talking to them, and in this case, showing them um, the result of their hard work working together. So Leibowitz is a very interesting uh, person. She currently lives in New York. She shoots many high-end clients, uh, Vogue and Cosmopolitan, things like that. But she usually works with an entire team uh, of assistance and things like that. Whereas Haas worked pretty much by himself many times. Many portraits work uh, alone uh, and just with the subject. So portraiture uh, hasn't really changed all that much over the time, over a period of time. Contemporary por portraiture still builds on the examples that we've talked about with these with these other photographers. They're using lighting well, they're building relationships with the subjects, they're dealing with timing and being resourceful on location to come up with different ideas and different ways to portray people and ultimately connect with their audience.